So a new Arkham game was just announced and it's uh, VR, which hasn't gone down too well with some people, especially after the last Arkham Universe outing, but hey, I love Arkham games and honestly don't hate virtual reality games when they're not just tech demos, so that's all to say that I'm honestly pretty excited about this game. And that's thanks completely and utterly to this trailer, because damn man, this was a good trailer. But unfortunately the awesomeness that is this trailer is actually just being overshadowed by people arguing on with VR is good or bad, but I myself have looked through the trailer nearly frame by frame and have dug up some really, really cool easter eggs as well as some uh, plot details that could be potentially kicking off in this game. So today we're going to be diving headfirst into this trailer and kind of looking at all of these cool little details and easter eggs I've dug up, you know, details about Batman and how he's been since Arkham Origins, details about the main villain and how he may have already shown up in the universe before or maybe not. And then and also just some other cool little easter eggs uh, that kind of link it in with this world we've become so fond of over the years. So without further ado, let's dive in. Now I can't actually play the trailer for you, so sorry there's copyright music playing, but the trailer opens with the sun setting on Gotham City and right off the bat, haha, we have something to talk about since Grand Avenue Station is right there. And for those of you who don't know what this is, this was actually a landmark in the Arkham Knight map and it's really cool that we we get to see it around the kind of Arkham Origins era because Arkham Origins has been kind of loosely referenced by games that came out after that game but this is completely different we're seeing a piece of Arkham Knight in the Arkham Origins era it's almost like these two kind of eras are now trading bits and pieces of lore it's not just going one way anymore but next we see a wide shot of a completely different part of Gotham and in the background we can see Grand Avenue Station placing it around here if you look at Arkham Knight's map and Yes, this is a completely new part of Gotham we'll be exploring in this game. However, it's not new for Batman because we can also see the Beacon Hotel here. Now, this hotel actually showed up in the Arkham Origins prequel comic in which it was abandoned, but it kind of seems like it's been reopened or the game has just ignoring the comic, which, yeah, spoiler alert, that that's honestly kind of likely. But in this same shot, we can also get a good view of the new GCPD. And on the roof, we can also see the bat signal that lights up as the shadows pass over it. And a fun little fact is that this is most likely the first official bat signal in the Arkham universe, because in Origins obviously the cops don't like Batman, but in the kind of side sequel for handheld consoles called Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate, Batman tells Gordon that he needs to find a better way of calling him. You're going to need a better way to get my attention, Gordon. I just happen to be listening to the police band. I'm sure we'll think of something. Maybe if you gave us your cell number. A problem we see that he has solved by the end of the game, but the light that we see in the sky kind of has a weird symbol, so I'm assuming Gordon just cobbled together something as a kind of pitch to Batman. Also, in some continuities, Batman himself provides the metal symbol to Gordon, which might have happened here since it kind of looks like Gordon has just bolted this thing to a regular floodlight. And also, not to get too sidetracked on the bat symbol, but I actually find it really funny that according to the different iterations of the signal, Batman wore this one bat symbol for like 10 years and then for just one year changed it to a completely different symbol around the time of Arkham Asylum, made Gordon change the signal and then changed it back. Like, what an asshole, man. But anyway, back on track, as the light fades from Gotham, people begin changing. In fact, in the trailer, if you look at any spot the shadows touch, you can actually see them change. Like how fire and graffiti pops up here or the windows get boarded up here. It's really cool because you can watch the trailer multiple times and, and see all these details. Also, for anyone wondering what these shadows are, I think it's meant to represent that the sun is setting on the kind of Gotham lie, which I'll be talking about later, but the game is going to be mostly about Rat King taking advantage of the kind of angry and downtrodden people of Gotham. But in the next scene, we see Monarch Theatre, an extremely important location in the Batman mythos, since this is where Bruce's parents were actually killed. This location shows up in Arkham Origins and Arkham City, and also a little bit in Arkham Knight. But also in this shot, we can see a poster for the Grey Ghost, Bruce's childhood hero and the character that inspired his crusade as Batman. And this poster continues the tradition of the Arkhamverse kind of bringing DC animated universe original characters 
into the game. For example, Harley Quinn was a DC Animated Universe original. Uh, there's also, obviously, The Grey Ghost. He was a DC Animated Universe original. And also, later in this trailer, there's actually a very obscure reference to one more original DCAU character. But we'll get onto that a little bit later. Because as the shadows pass over the poster, it changes from the ghost in grey to now host in rats. And the grey ghost is equally defaced to look more like the Rat King, the main villain of the game. Also in the same scene we can see a woman walking towards Monarch where the showing board has been vandalized to say Gotham dies soon. And as the board is lit on fire, it's revealed that the woman we're following is none other than Harleen Quinzel, still looking very similar to how she did in Arkham Origins, but with a few key changes, such as her leaning into her whole color scheme, replacing her doctor's coat with a black one, now wearing a red shirt, replacing her old glasses with some more pointed and red rimmed ones, and she now sports red lipstick. Also, the saturation has been slightly toned down on her skin to give her more of a ghostly white look, foreshadowing the look she'll take on as a villain later down the line. As for what Harley's role in the game will be, we don't know much other than we'll be seeing her origin, whatever that means. But I'm pretty interested, considering that her whole fall from grace started in Arkham Origins when Joker begins manipulating her. So I feel like the Joker is pretty connected to this Harley's origin, but I also don't know if we'll be seeing Troy Baker's Joker show up. This is mostly because it's like a joke at this point. If there's and plot point in the Arkham games that's going to be like a twist, like there's a twist coming up, you can just pretty much bet money on it that it's going to be the Joker or related to the Joker. There is no Arkham without Joker. So people are kind of like tired of the Joker showing up in every single Arkham game, but I think Harley's character arc in this game might kind of be about her realizing that she kind of likes the way the Joker thinks. Maybe he won't show up. Maybe it's this plague that's taking over Gotham and the darkness that's fallen over it that's actually going to push her into realizing that she kind of likes the chaos and goes and breaks the Joker out. That might be kind of where we're heading on it, but I, I don't know. Anything can happen. This is an origin story, and the Arkhamverse is well known for reinterpreting these things. But also, just don't rule out the Joker thing. Troy Baker is going to be playing a pre-Two-Face Harvey Dent, so it's not entirely impossible that the Joker will show up, even just for a little bit. Like, they've got his voice actor. Now, moving on, in the next scene, we see Ratcatcher, or as he's known in this game, Rat King. And as the shadows pass over him, he is transformed into what we'll probably see him wearing in the game. And I, for one, am actually really interested to see how they handle Rat King, mostly because this one seems like it's a pretty heavy rework of the character. Ratcatcher has appeared in the Arkhamverse before, both in the Arkham Asylum bios and also in the comics, and he's been depicted as being very, very similar to his comic counterpart. But honestly, the Arkham Arkham comics are so unfaithful to the games that nothing can be taken as a fact from them, so we've never properly seen Ratcatcher in this world, leaving him open to reinterpretation. And one of the big changes is his costume, and I think it is a, it's a good change. It looks sick. Rat King's costume has been changed to more of a red and brown color scheme as opposed to his usual green and brown. And the outfit is actually cobbled together out of his prison jumpsuit, which we saw Blackgate prisoners wearing a variation of in Arkham Origins. But the biggest clue to this rat catcher's story lies in the background when he gets up. Right next to him is an IV drip that seems to be attached to him. And I think that this might be a clue that Rat King could be terminally ill and this ticking clock has led him to enact whatever plan he's cooked up during this game. Next up we see another familiar location with it being the Solomon Wayne Courthouse which we visited in the opening of Batman Arkham City and walking out of the court is none other than Dr. Jonathan Crane aka the Scarecrow. And and according to some info on the game, Scarecrow is another villain besides Harley that we'll see the origin of in this game. Now after Scarecrow puts on his mask, we get a wide shot of the vandalized courthouse and get some more small details. Starting with the graffiti, we can see one that says, end this failed experiment with a rat wearing a crown next to it. Further up, we can see better to die as a rat than live as a pig. There's also the letter A next to it, which may be an anarchy tag, but according to some thug dialogue in Arkham Knight, Anarchy completely disappeared after Arkham Origins, so it's kind of unlikely that he's going to show up in this game. But finally, on the Lady Justice statue, we can see that big X's have been drawn over her eyes, indicating that Justice is dead. Another little detail in the background is that coming out of the courthouse as well is a gas that looks a lot like Scarecrow's fear toxin. And like a lot of 
stuff. At the current time, we don't know what Scarecrow's role will be in the story. If he's working with Rat King here or if he's just taking advantage of the chaos. And also, yes, don't worry, I will be giving my thoughts on what I actually think is going on in the story just a bit later. Next scene, we see Commissioner James Gordon looking a lot like his Arkham origin self again. Behind him is a man being interrogated by possibly Harvey Dent. We already know that Harvey is meant to show up in this game, but I don't know if this is him. I'm used to seeing a bit more burnt skin, you know? But the guy in the chair is being interrogated for what seems to be quite a long time. And I really like that as the shadows fall on Gordon, it's like time skips for the entire room. Where is Rat King appears on the whiteboard. The interrogation room's double-sided glass has been smashed and Gordon looks like he's seen better days. It's a really cool representation of how futile the GCPD are in this situation. How the wheels of justice are turning way too slowly to get anywhere. And it's this futility that paves the way for Batman's entrance in the next scene. But before that, Gordon loses patience and kicks the interrogation table against the suspect. And here we get a really, really cool detail as well as a super deep cut. Behind Gordon, on the wall, you can see that the room designation number reads F-84. And this is actually a reference to the Batman the Animated Series episode Lockup, in which a brutal Arkham Asylum guard is fired from his job and decides to become a vigilante like Batman. The only problem is that Lyle Bolton, the man who now goes by Lockup, was completely totalitarian and didn't just apprehend criminals, but also sentenced them to prison sentences aboard his ship called the USS Halsey, which had the serial number F-84. Now I don't know if this reference to lockup is just a nod to another piece of Batman media or if it's a hint towards maybe what could be happening in the story, but I guess we're just gonna have to wait and see. But finally, entering the end of the trailer, we see Rat King's followers push the bat signal off the GCPD's roof, and in steps Batman with a new suit. And I think it looks really good. Like I always wondered what the kind of next level of the Arkham origin suit would be, and, and this is it. One of the challenges that developers face when they're making an Arkham Origins era Batman game is that they have to design a suit that kind of looks like Batman, but not like the full-fledged thing yet. Like if you look at Arkham Asylum Batman, that's like definitive Batman. They always have to be making something that is just slightly below definitive Batman. And this is just, this is a fantastic in-between point. And while we're on the topic of things evolving between Origins and Asylum, let's talk about the voice. As we all know, unfortunately, the voice of Batman, Kevin Conroy, passed away in 2022. But with Roger Craig Smith reprising his role from Origins, it actually sounds like he might be altering the Origins voice to sound like it's getting closer to how Batman sounds in the original games. The Rat King will stop at nothing to destroy my city. If there's one person in Arkham City who knows what's really going on, it's her. In Arkham Origins, Batman had a bit more of a gruffness to his voice, but here it sounds like he's almost replaced that kind of underlying rage you could feel in his voice in the other game with something that's a bit more determined and forceful, which I would say I'd associate with Conroy's Batman. Anyway, in the final shot, we see a close-up of Batman's face, and I gotta say, I kind of missed Origins Batman. Like, Conroy's Batman looked classic and just pissed off in general, but the face they used for Origins Batman? I, I don't know, man. He looks so damn angry. But ending this thing off, the trailer ends with what seems to be a radio broadcast from the Rat King himself. When the bat falls, the rats rise. And this is what leads me into my thoughts about what the story might be. Pretty much from what we know, Rat King is going to be more of a cult-like figure in this game. And what I think he might be doing is appealing to the lower class of Gotham citizens. The ones that are downtrodden and ignored by the system. If you remember, when we see Scarecrow, we can see some graffiti saying, end this failed experiment, as well as Lady Justice's eyes being painted over. I think this shows that whoever this group of people are, they have no confidence in the system anymore. Anymore. And that belief has been brought about by Rat King somehow. Another element to this whole story is the music that plays through the trailer, which is Bullet with Butterfly Wings by the Smashing Pumpkins. And in this song, there's a line that goes, Despite all my rage, I'm still just a rat in a cage. And there are many interpretations of this song online, but comparing it to the game, I think it makes some sense. Rat King is in prison and possibly sick, but there's nothing he can do about it. But there's also the people 
people Rat King brings into his cult. He appeals to how forgotten they feel, and despite how angry and stressed they are, nothing will change the fact that they depend upon the system that exploits them. Despite all of their combined rage, they are all just rats in a cage. Also, I think a big piece of the puzzle comes from the final moments of the trailer. Rat King says that the rats will rise when the bat falls, which I think means that he set up Batman to be his movement's biggest enemy. I think he's possibly trying to get the idea across that Batman protects the status quo of Gotham's terrible conditions and is some sort of agent for the elite. And I might not be far off the truth because in this screenshot we can see some graffiti labeling Batman as a fascist. This is pretty interesting because we actually did see a reference to an actual fascist earlier in the trailer who is Lockup. So either the themes of this game are about control or maybe someone like Lockup has been impersonating Batman, destroying his reputation and giving Rat King more legitimacy. Overall, Batman's main struggle in the story is going to be about how far he goes to achieve his goals. With the people of Gotham against him, does Batman put them all in check, confirming their beliefs, or is there another way other than brute force? Also, this is totally unscripted by the way, something I just realized while recording this is that in the original Arkham games, those three ones, Batman consistently is always talking about how there is another way. So maybe that is a lesson that he learns during the events of this game. Overall, it's another installment on the origin side of the Arkham universe, which means that Batman needs to learn something that gets him closer to being the controlled and efficient Dark Knight that we see in Asylum City and Night. And that's about it. Personally, I really love the Arkham games and I'm really happy that I'll get to experience another Batman narrative set in this world. And unlike Suicide Squad, it really seems like the devs actually care about the world this is set in. I mean, the only reason I decided to do a trailer breakdown is because every two seconds I was going, hey, wow, that's a reference to another Arkham thing. It genuinely looks like preparation and homework has been done on the universe here and I'll definitely be playing it when it comes out. So if you guys want to see me stream it or a, a review when it comes out I'll, I'll definitely put one up anyway thanks for watching the video thank you to everyone who's made it this far i'm b4 brandos i usually don't do trailer breakdowns but despite what my channel says about me i don't just like old games i still get super hyped when new stuff gets announced so i'd love to keep doing these whenever a trailer pops up that i'm genuinely interested in i will throw one of these out if it's something you guys are interested in. anyway if you enjoyed please like or subscribe or share this video or anything it all helps Helps me and I am always trying to put in the most amount of quality that I can into every single video so that's my pledge to you if you subscribe I'm never going to put out something that absolutely fucking sucks anyway I will see you guys in the next video bye